Good afternoon to my fellow engineers. Now, you might remember last week, or last session, or yesterday, I don't know when you watched the video, that we made a table, and we made the table from one solid part, and the table was based on these dimensions. Now, we made this table from one part, as I said, and the problem with that is obviously that we'd have a very, very big piece of wood in order to make this table from one part. Um, the more practical way of doing it would, of course, be to get loads of panels and stick them together. Um, and in this case, you know, you'd probably have the legs as a part, as, as parts, and you'd have the pa side panel, you'd have a base panel, um, a middle panel, a top panel, and then you'd put on this top at the top. And you'd, you'd, um, you'd stick it together using either glue, or maybe you'd use, uh, screws or dowel joints or, or butt joints or something like that. So you'd, you'd stick it all together rather than making it from one solid piece. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be using, uh, a number of parts. We're going to make some parts. And we're going to stick them all together to make this table. Um, I'm only going to make two parts for you. There, there, there are six parts required, um, six different types of parts, I should say, required for this. Um, and I'm only going to make two of them for you, but I'll, uh, I'll show you how to make the other ones uh, in a later video um, if you if you can't work out how to make the uh, dimensions working. Because um, uh, this uh, the parts that I'm going to show you are designed to give you enough information to make the other uh, to make the um, other parts from that uh, information. But if you're having difficulty with that, then um, I'll probably put it as like a bonus video at the end of the uh, the basics pack or something like that. So the uh, the table that we're going to be making today uh, will end up looking like this. Now, obviously, uh, in our last video, we made it look uh, quite similar to this, um, but it was all one part. And, and this time, we're going to make it an assembly. And I'm also going to show you how we can color it in to look like this. Um, this isn't to say that we're going to be rendering it to this standard because this is uh, this is using a Keyshot renderer, but we are going to be um, uh, colouring it at least so it doesn't look in the same dull grey fashion as last time. And to do that we're going to be assigning some um, some materials to the to the product. So if we open up Solid Edge uh, again, um, yeah, the, the, I've already made the four other parts. As I said, I'm going to be making two parts in this video and there are six parts in total. Um, there, there are, there's a base panel and a... Uh, the base panel is what I'm going to be making today. I'm going to be making a leg as well. Um, there's a middle panel, which is that middle shelf. Um, there's a top board which sticks into it, uh, which is the 440 by 440 by 20 um, bit that you know sticks out the ends. Um, there's going to be the side panels. There's going to be two of those, um, and then we're going to hold it all together with dowel rods. Now, in reality, you'd probably use screws, um, and if you were being lazy, you could probably just stick it together with glue. But uh, we're going to use dowel rods, which uses a little bit of uh, glue in the real world. And um, if you've ever put together a flat pack furniture, you probably have used uh, dowel rods before. They're the short um, circular pieces of wood. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to make our uh, isometric part. And we're probably going to start using, uh, we're going to start by the leg. Um, this is going to be the last video where I'm going to start in synchronous and have to transition to ordered, because in the beginning of the next video I'm going to be showing you how to set your preferences to stay in ordered. But this is just the final reminder for anyone that still uh, still is in synchronous, um, uh, synchronous and synchronous there, you just need to right click on synchronous and of course transition to ordered. So we're going to go ahead and uh, use the extrusion command and we're going to start working on our legs. So we're just going to use the uh, rectangle by centre command and do a 40mm by 40mm leg and this is going to be 60mm tall in the upwards direction. And now we need to uh, we need to make um, the hole for the dowel joint. Now we could just go ahead and use the cut command, but I'm going to introduce a new tool to making this hole, and it is the hole tool. So if you click on hole, you should look at this sort of panel here. Um, so I'll just give you a quick overview. The way it works is you select a panel, you select a plane, which you know you select a plane that you want to cut into. So if I selected this plane, which is what we're going to do, it'd cut the hole downwards. If we selected this plane, it'd go across, and if we went this way, it'd go across in the x direction as well. Um, so you'd select a plane, then you'd uh, draw what it's going to look like effectively, and in this case it's going to be a hole, and you're going to position where it's going to be, and then you're going to sh uh, show which direction that you want it to point down. And then in this case it's just going to go obviously into the board, but if you had um, like a H, H shape, um, so if you imagine like a H like that, and then you had it on the inside, you could either have it go that way or you could have it go that way. Um, and that's just depending on which direction we're going to use. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, select the, uh, the top panel here, Okay, and this uh, up here is the whole circle that we're going to be using. Okay, so um, you, you you can set it on points, you can set it somewhere randomly. 
Of course, we want to set it in a very defined location. We're good engineers. We want to know, uh, we want to decide where it's going to be put. Um, so we're not actually going to use the hole command just yet. We will use it um, when we're actually making the hole. But first of all, we're going to um, we're going to use uh, dimensions to um, uh, to decide where we're going to put it. So if we just place our our hole somewhere on the board, like so, um, just to make sure that was a, uh, a size ten hole. Um, uh, so just click on that button there, and it will bring you the hole options. You want to set it to size ten. For solid edge ST4, ST5, and ST6 users, um, there's a there's a little uh, text box around about in this area where you define it as, um, and you just want to make sure that it's on ten and change it to ten if it's not. Um, but we're not going to be changing any other settings, so don't change any other settings. Just make sure that it's, it's uh, the hole's on ten, and then press OK. Okay. Um, so now at the minute, this hole is uh, just arbitrarily placed on the board. Um, and the way we want it done is we want the center of the hole to be seven and a half millimeters from that edge, and we want it to be seven and a half millimeters from that edge. So what we're going to do, we're going to press the distance between command, and then we can select the center point. So by hitting the edge of the hole, it says, right, I'm going to look at the hole. That's what I want to uh, I want to find that information about. And then by dragging it to the middle, if you see that little symbol come up with the with the Right beside my cursor, there's a, there's a small hole with a cross in it. That defines that it's at the center. So click on that, and then you click the edge that you want it to be, um, that you want to define it against. Okay, and this is saying that it's um, uh, 8.67 millimeters from this top edge, and then if I do this, it's saying that it's uh, 9.53 centimeters from this far edge. But we want it to be 7.5 millimeters, uh, sorry, those were millimeters last time, sorry, not centimeters. We want it to be 7.5 millimeters from each edge and then right, right click to uh, clear your selection and then do the same process and select that as 7.5 centimeters as well so now this hole is seven and a half centimeters from each edge based on its center point close that sketch and we're going to say we want it to go downwards so now this hole goes all the way through which is really nice now we could leave it as that, that is kind of like a leg sorted, but um, we're going to do, if you if you press the cut command, we, we've used the cut command in the uh, in the part video, um, we're going to have uh, we're going to have it so that this whole, whilst it does go effectively all the way through, it doesn't have to go all the way through, we're going to, we're going to um, make a small cut out at the bottom that goes up uh, 40 millimeters uh, along, um, so that the dowel rod doesn't have to be uh, 60 millimeters plus whatever it is on the other side, uh, we can make it so the dowel rod's a little bit shorter. So we're going to collect the. Uh, we're going to set the bottom as the plane that we're going to cut onto. That's the bottom panel. And we're going to select the circle by point. Similarly as before, we're going to find the center point of the circle, and we're going to set the radii as the uh, the edge of the uh, not not the edge, but the, the the corner edge, the corner point of the uh, of the um, uh, the square. Close that sketch, and then now we're going to cut upwards. By 40 millimeters, and you'll see that that's the new cut, and that's what it looks like. So that circle has been cut upwards. And notice that obviously, because um, uh, from this straight line and this straight line outwards to the circle, there wasn't anything to cut into. It hasn't been affected in any way. It's only been the internals that have been affected. So we're going to finish that. So that's effectively what our legs going to look like. Um, finally, I'm just going to introduce you to um, a way that we can make this look a little bit smarter and a little bit neater. Um, if you imagine a uh, like a steel block, and if a steel block has been recently cut into a perfectly cuboid shape, the edges are actually really sharp, and they can they can actually cut you. Um, and obviously, this isn't going to be made of uh, this isn't going to be made of um, steel or metal or anything. This is going to be made out of wood. But still, it's good engineering to practice to do something called chamfering, which allows edges. To, it, it, it makes edges look nicer, but it also makes edges a little bit safer for. Um, um, the sharper materials. And there are two ways of cutting off an edge. We can either round it, which would be like a, like a semicircle, or, or sorry, like a quarter circle, or we can chamfer it, which would be like a straight line. So there's rounding, which, as this video shows, it's a um, it's like a semicircle, or rather a quarter circle that comes on the side. Or we're going to chamfer it. We're going to set it to four millimeters, which means it's going to go four millimeters in that way, and it's going to go four millimeters down that way. We're going to select what edge we want to uh, be chamfered, and that's what it's going to look like. 
So that's going to be our chamfered edge. And obviously we want it for a couple of the edges. So if you go ahead and put chamfer, make sure that this is on chain. It means you can select a number of different edges to chamfer. Select these edges, so that, that one there and these ones, make sure that you're doing those ones. And then make sure that you've done the four bottom ones as well. So we don't want to do uh, this one because it will cut into there and this one because it might cut into there. Um, and we don't want to do this back one or these ones because they're going to be very hidden and you're not going to see those at all because they're going to be underneath the table. So press finish and that's our that's our table leg. Um, finally, as you can remember from uh, this, we want it to be uh, coloured so we're going to change the material properties. At the minute it's uh, it's not saved as any type of material, it's just saved as a as a as like a as a part, but we want to change the material properties for it to be in a in a, in a type of wood. So the way we're going to do that, if we go up to the um, solid edge button, uh, it's effectively like the fire button, and then you go down to properties. This will this these four sections between them will tell you the uh, or or let you set the properties of a product. So you go to material table. It will allow us to change what material the product is made out of. And I've got it set on to uh, uh, materials, non-metals, woods, and I'm going to choose mahogany because I quite like mahogany. And if we apply that to the model, uh, first of all, this is for ST7, for ST6, 5 and 4 users, um, it will look uh, a little different. There will be a drop down menu up here, um, and if you select that drop down menu, and um, you can choose which uh, material you make it out of there. So I'm going to apply that to the model. And now that's, that's now made of mahogany. So we can go ahead and save this part. And we're going to call this part leg. We're going to quickly make the uh, side panel as well. A new isometric part. And then see that leg just turned up in my recent documents. I'll just uh, show you the recent documents. Leg is now one of my recent documents because I made that very recently. Uh, uh, switch to synchronous again. Uh, switch to ordered from synchronous again. So now we're in ordered. And we're going to make the... Um, we're going to make the centre panel. Which is going to be... Uh, we're changing the dimensions a little bit. We're going to make it 20 millimeters thick instead of this 40 millimeters, um, just because it uh, looks a bit uh, nicer. And we're going to have to in in include the holes for the legs, and we're going to have to include the holes for the sides. So, set the bottom plane, and we're going to select again our um, uh, rectangle by center. Now we want this to be 400 uh, 400 millimeters long. But we only want it to be 360 millimeters wide because of the um, the two side panels, which are each going to be 20 millimeters, and that will make the entire shape 400 uh, 400 mil if you include the 20 millimeter sides. And you're going to close that sketch. Now we want to drive this up by 20 millimeters. Okay. We now need to add those holes where the um, where the uh, 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 the, um, the legs are going to be. So we're going to go back onto hole and select the surface. But we need to, whilst it's quite easy to see which side is the longer side, I mean this side is probably the longer side, we need to just double check. So we're going to go on smart dimension. Okay. So we want our holes to be on the 400 uh, uh, side. We're going to have four of them. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to Select that point, make an 80 millimeter long guidance hole. Uh, no, no, I don't know. We're going to select that again. User, we're going to make that um edge. And as I said from last time, it was uh, uh if you remember, it was seven and a half millimeters from the back edge of a leg, which means because it's a 40 millimeter wide leg, it's going to be 32 and a half millimeters from each the this is the center of the hole for 32 and a half centimeters uh, millimeters from each side of the uh, of the leg. So if we select 32.5 millimetres, 32.5 millimetres again, and this point is where our hole has to be. So if we do the same way as last time, hole, make sure it's on, uh, on a 10, don't change any of the other settings and press OK. And we can put that where we just designed it there, get rid of these dimensions. and. We're only going to put that one hole in, and you're going to see why in a sec. Cut it down. 
I'm going to introduce something called mirroring. Okay, so if we select this part here, then we can. Uh, th we want this part to be on this side there and there, and because this uh, this um, axis is in the centre of the uh, um, of the entire block, we can use it to our advantage. So we've selected that part. We've selected what we want to what we want to mirror, which is the hole. We're going to select mirror, and now we have to choose a plane. So the way it works is you select a part that you want to mirror, and then you choose which plane you want to reflect it upon. So if you just imagine um, uh, holding up a mirror, quite literally, the mirror itself would be the plane that you're reflecting upon. So we're going to select... Oh, it's going to be a little bit different. So we're going to introduce the base reference planes to make it a little simpler. We're going to select the um, right YZ plane, so it looks there. And additionally, press down shift and select that. Do it again so that we can introduce it to the other side. Like so. The final things that we want to get done is we want um, some holes in the side for the side panels to connect to. So if you just make a cut into the side. We're not going to use a hole this time because we don't want a hole going all the way through the material because it's a really long hole. Um, and it would, uh, it would, um, yeah, it would uh, compromise the structural integrity. So we're going to make this uh, this hole 80 millimeters from the end on each side. And as I said, that's one of the dimensions that you'll need if you're going to try and go ahead and work out the other dimensions um, of the uh, of this design. And again, we want a 10 millimeter hole. Oh, that's a uh, sorry that. Uh, sometimes it sets it as di diameter, sometimes it sets it as radii. We want a 10 millimeter diameter hole. So, yep. Okay, and that's fine. And uh, it will save that so I can do that again. Get rid of these. Construction lines. And then we want to bring these holes, not all the way through, but by 20 millimeters and then press finish. Okay, We want to reflect these holes to be on that side as well, so we're going to select our part, we're going to select the mirror command, we're going to select what plane we want to reflect it upon, and then they're going to be there, and we have to press finish to secure that they're there, and that's there. The final change that we're going to make to the uh, design is we're just going to introduce that chamfering again, just to make it look a little bit neater, so we're on a 4mm setback, um, it's already defaulted to a 45, millimeter, uh, 45 degree angle, so we're going to introduce that on these two sides, but not on the uh, side panels. And press finish. And then finally, of course, we want to change the uh, material properties, properties back into mahogany, so that it uh, it looks like it fits in the other designs. And there you go. That's the uh, that's the base panel, and we previously made the leg. Um, I'll leave it to you to work out what the other dimensions are. Uh, so let me go ahead and save this. As a, as a base panel. So there we have it. We've, we've created, uh, well if I, I'll show you on this sketch, we've created this panel here and then we've created the, the four legs. We only had to create one leg because we can just replicate it four times um, and this panel is going to be used down here and underneath the 4040 40 panel, the you know, 440 by 440 panel. Um, I'll leave it to you to work out the uh, dimensions of the sides and the center panel, and if you uh, if you want to add a top panel like I've done here, the uh, dimensions of the top panel. But um, in the next video, I'm just going to show you how to assemble this all together um, using the parts that we've created. So I'll see you then.